Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video on chapter 12, section 6 and 7. Here we're going to compare molecular solids and covalent network solids. Now, we already introduced the uh, four classes of solids. So we've look, gone over ionic solids and metallic solids. We've taken a break to talk about intermolecular forces. And now we're going to talk again about molecular solids and covalent network solids in the scope of intermolecular forces. So a molecular solid consists of atoms or molecules held together by dipole-dipole attractions or forces, dispersion forces, and or hydrogen bonds. So here, molecular solids are held together by intermolecular forces. Due to these intermolecular forces being very weak in comparison to you know, chemical bonds, covalent bonds, molecular solids are soft and have low melting points. Most substances are, are gases at room temperature form molecular solids at low temperatures. An example would be argon, H2O, CO2. Other molecular solids would be like things like sucrose, you know, sugar, uh, maybe a starch. Those are molecular in nature, held together by intermolecular forces, and have low uh, melting points. Now, a covalent network solid, similar but still very different. It consists of atoms held together in large networks by covalent bonds. So these <clears throat> molecules, or these, sorry, these atoms aren't held together by intermolecular forces. They're held together by covalent bonds. Since covalent bonds are much stronger than intermolecular forces, these solids are much harder and have much, much higher melting points than molecular solids do. Much higher melting points. Some examples, diamond, coal, and graphite. Those are big examples of covalent network solids. These, diamond, coal, and graphite, are all made from carbon. So they're all different forms of the same element. Carbon stacked in different ways to give us different substances. It's pretty neat. Those are called allotropes. You have different forms of the same element. Some other examples would be silicon. The way it stacks together makes a covalent network solid. Same with germanium, quartz, which is silicon dioxide, and silicon carbide, and boron nitride. These here are, you know, not very, probably well known for you, but they're very hard substances and very durable substances. Now let's look a little bit at diamond and graphite. Structurally, diamond, one of the hardest substances known to man, has this tetrahedral arrangement. And this is the arrangement that makes it so tough and so hard. It's the directionality of the tetrahedron here. Remember, tetrahedral is that central uh, carbon here with four electron bond density domains coming off. And this will keep on going and keep on going, making a nice solid network. That's diamonds. Structure making it very hard. Graphite, which is not as hard, this is like pencil lead. We know pencil lead can break pretty easily, is made of layers, actually. So let's see this blue one as a top layer. The red one's a bottom layer. I try my best to do a little 3D drawing here, guys. But uh, bear with me if it's not that great, which it isn't. Um, pencil lead breaks much more easily. Why? Well, it's still made from carbons. All these points here are carbons. So it's strong, but these different sheets, this layer up here, the blue one, and the red layer, they're held together by points of attraction. So these dotted lines represent some attraction between the top sheet and the bottom sheet. If you can see those dotted lines, you know, they're kind of light. But these layers are held together by intermolecular forces. And that's what make, makes pencil lead a little bit more brittle than, well, a lot more brittle than a diamond. So you know, please take notes on the differences between covalent network solids and molecular solids and come to class prepared to talk about it. Adios.